tires for sale here. Go ahead and put those on your uh, on your F two fifty there. Kidding you, 
That's exactly what it said. <laughs> so, infer from that what you will. <laughs> you could call it coincidence. All you want. I know that. set on is like I don't know uh, 10 or 20 to 1 something like that okay so there you go 80 80 seconds to 1 so it's 80 to 1 right because 1 minute and 20 seconds would be 80 seconds so there we go yeah, well, that's easy 80 to 1 so I think I normally have it set at maybe yeah 10 or 20 to 1 Maybe. Something like that. And that's fast. So, 80 to 1, that's like ripping. <clears throat> and uh, honestly, it can get kind of boring for me 
because while it's recording, I'm just sitting here with nothing, with nothing to do but drive. <laughs> I can't even like <laughs> look at stuff on my phone or nothing, right? You know, <clears throat> it's just up there recording to get 30 seconds worth of worth of uh, hyperlapse footage, and it's 80 to one. My 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 phones. <laughs> My phone's uh, off limits for like an hour and a half or something crazy, right? An hour and 20 minutes, right? <laughs> or whatever. So it can get a little bit boring for me. But that's all right. Especially at nighttime. I mean, where it's the most cool is when I'm going through mountains. When I'm going through stuff like this, all right? Because it's not as if I can like sit around and goof off looking at stuff on my phone anyways. You know, it's when I'm going just straight through the middle of the desert, straight, flat, <laughs> no turning or nothing. It's like, yeah, I want shit to be, I, I want to be able to distract my attention away from, from uh, the monotony, you know? Of course, all right? <clears throat> and, and I do it all very safely. Let me just make the disclaimer. <clears throat> I have my phone holders. I've told you in the past. I have stuff that holds all my devices. It's all hands-free. I'm not, I'm not being that hypocritical jerk. It's like yelling at everybody for holding their phones while they're driving and then going around holding my phone. <clears throat> yep. So, uh, yeah, and then I got some other news from the uh, from the boss. I oh, know I might have already mentioned this, but uh, he did the uh, the business bi the the bit uh, inspection. Uh, on the business, the audit side of things yesterday, where they actually go through and inspect, you know, how he is, you know, operating his, his, uh, his crew of drivers, you know, and his trucks, making sure everybody's in compliance, and, and he passed, and uh, so that means we passed both aspects of it, which, you know, one was mechanical, inspect the equipment the other one was inspect day-to-day -day operations and uh, and uh, he passed and there's gonna be a few things he's gonna kind of adjust because um, the reason why this audit was initiated <clears throat> had to do with uh, the fact that one or more of his other drivers uh, got themselves, you know, popped on a few things. One, one driver in particular really blew it. Like, really, really, really blew it. And which means he blew it for the whole company, right? Um, apparently there might have been another one or two that had some tickets and stuff like that for speeding. <clears throat> so that's, you know, that's not good. So all that stuff combined in the shade of the audit. So, uh, so there's going to be some adjustments in the way that he has to handle things for a little while until, until, because they, they do things based on kind of like a points system, you know, like if you, you know, if, if you don't have any, you know, drivers with, you know, you know, citations and stuff, you know, missing scales or, you know, uh, you know, failing inspections, you know, all that kind of stuff out on the road. <clears throat> you have a high point system and basically what that does is it makes it more efficient for the entire fleet out on the road. 
because uh, you know you know they have they, they keep track of that stuff you know through a computer system and that's and it's all connected with the free pass that we have and so um, so anyways so like since all that stuff happened especially with that one driver in particular uh, like I have noticed my pre-pass, you know, has not been giving me a green light. You know, I've been getting red lit a lot uh, compared to before what happened. So, um, so it's definitely, I've definitely noticed it, you know. So basically, he's got to make a few adjustments in the business, uh, the way things are being run. And, uh, you know, try to uh, reestablish a, a higher uh, point, you know, setting, you know, as far as the free pass goes and all that kind of stuff. A higher rating or whatever, whatever, whatever word you want to use, and then you get the point. So, uh, but, so whatever, I mean, that's cool. No big deal. Um, what, what we're all after, I believe, or, you know, he and I, at least, if not along with his other drivers, you know, a professional um, operation, so no big deal. <laughs>
passed on the left has a whole herd of uh, white cows. Absolutely white cows. Not white and black, not Oreos. <clears throat> they were all white. They were all right. Tracked once again. We're gonna go ahead and um, have this uh, mobile mechanic come out and uh, change out a carrier bearing on the drive axle or not uh, on the drive shaft rather. Not because it's broken, <laughs> but because it's going bad. So the boss called me on the way out. And he's like, "Hey, there's a guy out there. We can go ahead and swap that out." So I don't know. We're we're gonna just go ahead do a pit stop here at Walmart and uh, yep change out a carrier bearing here in the parking lot you know we met this guy out here once before when the uh, transmission was going out so I have met him once already and Seems like a very capable individual. I just, uh, man. I got a lot of driving to do. I have a lot of driving still to do. I still have 2,186 miles to go, so. I guess it's better to do it now than to do it on the side of the road. Not that that's what would have happened, but, uh, but that's what we're trying to avoid, so. 
I gotta give this guy a call, and um, that's that. So that's a wrap for now. Hope you all are doing well. We'll see you somewhere down the road. Take care. Okay. Oh, shoot. Oh, boy. Hang on. Okay, take two. I almost left without doing a quick walk around here. Make sure all my lights are working because it will be getting dark for this next segment of driving time. So, got it knocked out. I'll tell you what. It's funny that, uh, you know, my, uh, my F-250 diesel at home, that I just re had to redo my carrier bearing, and then next thing you know, here we are doing the, the carrier bearing on this truck. And those are some nice looking ramps right there in that parking lot. But never mind that. Yeah, so it's funny that I just did the carrier bearing on my personal truck. And next thing you know, here we are doing it on this truck. But I'll tell you what, um, The guy who came out Turn left on Front Street. To, to remove and replace the one on this truck. Maybe I already mentioned this on the way out here, but I am Mr. Redundant, so let's say it again. Uh, when the transmission was going out, I stopped in Evanston here and uh, called the boss to let him know, hey, this you know, it got really bad coming down this grade, you know, a couple weeks ago, a month ago, whatever it was. And so this guy who came out, he called, you know, so he called this guy. Uh, the name of his, his service is called uh, A1 uh, Diesel, A1 Diesel Service, I think. Or, you know, it might say truck diesel service, diesel truck service, I, I, A1. The guy's name is Dave. And so Dave came out, whatever that was, when the transmission was going crappy on us, to give uh, his opinion to the boss. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, he was a good guy. Like, so we kept him in the memory banks, right? So, of course, you know, that's who we called to come out here and do the R&R &R on this carrier bearing today. Turn left on I-80 East. Whereas last time, he just kind of came out and gave uh, advice, you know, he gave an opinion. This time, he came out and he actually did work for us. And, uh, and yeah, the guy comes out and just fully equipped. He's got a big, you know, uh, well, fully equipped uh, service truck, you know, with, you know, it's a tool truck, right? So he's got everything, you know, mobile, you know, on the truck. He's got a compressor in the back, you know, so, he, Continue on so he's able to use pneumatic impact guns and stuff like that. And, uh, and he did knock it out in uh, quick time. And uh, super professional, super friendly guy. And no BS. He comes out, he freaking climbs under the truck. He climbs, he, got, he comes out, he suits up, he gets under the truck, he does the fucking work, picks up his tools, and he's done, right? No BS, right? And, you know, so he doesn't come out dilly dally and, you know, hey, well, maybe you don't need to, you know, he doesn't come out and, and act like one of these guys who will. You know, be like, oh, I don't think you really need to do it, you know, or doesn't really want to work. Your guy comes out and he's, he's there to freaking get you back up and running. So, A1 Diesel, uh, 
chart service or whatever out of Evanston, Wyoming. The guy's badass. Um, definitely, uh, and 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 I saw the receipt for what he did just now, and he charged a very fair price. So, uh, yeah. So. Uh, five stars. I gave him five stars on Google, and I gave him a good review on Google. So, <clears throat> so if you ever, um, you know, if you're a driver, you're ever running through Wyoming, you know, near Evanston, and you know, find yourself in a pinch, give him a call. He will get you back up and running. He is fully equipped. He can handle, um, you know, pretty much anything. You know. Of the, of the normal sort of things that will, you know, go wrong with the truck while you're running down the road, you know. I mean, he's not going to come to a parking lot and, you know, do a head gasket, right? But he's going to get you back up and running, you know, you know, for the standard breakdown kind of stuff, so pretty cool. I asked him, uh, you know, when I got to the Walmart, and I gave him a call. But yeah, so uh, what's your ETA over here? He said, oh, probably like 20 minutes. Okay. I says, realistically, how long do you expect it'll take, you know, to, you know, once you arrive, you know, to the point where I'm able to leave again? He said, well, probably about an hour. And uh, he hit that, I think, pretty much dead on the mark. He might even, he might have even gotten it done a little sooner than an hour. Awesome stuff. Give credit where credit's due. So we are back up and running, and shoot, I mean, just now, you know, as we made our way back onto the interstate here, it feels better already, you know. <laughs> like, I, I did notice just now, leaving, that wow, it's not doing that clunking thing where I pulled off the other day in Sparks you know, to check to make sure my kingpin was locked because it felt like something, you know, was clunking and it was a carrier bearing. It's good to go. Yep, so there we go. So, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to close this one up for now. And, uh, somewhere down the way here. See if we'll do some more of that warp drive once it gets dark or something. Or maybe while well, it's light, you know. You never know. It'll be a surprise. Alright, see y'all then. I mean, imagine that. 
that something Max thinks so. He's like, dude, I love I-80 eastbound. Let's stop and take a closer look.
sometimes the main event doesn't take care of it and you have you know a few aftershocks right following the main event and he's been having aftershocks all day sometimes big ones and sometimes little ones and it's just like this poor little guy say, see that's what you get that's that's why I'm always telling you no when you keep freaking running around and you know through parking lots and rest areas and you find like old you know thrown out you know rotting food and stuff you know from truck drivers you know just toss stuff out their windows you know he's always running around picking stuff up and trying to get a hold of it before I catch him so, yeah, that's what you get that's what you get for drinking that shitty water that I keep telling you not to drink when you see it so yeah that poor little guy and uh, he hasn't even eaten today because of it I made him his breakfast jeez uh, I think before we left the metro and he hardly even touched it as well. and then sure enough I mean, we're talking, that was early this morning. That was 7.30, 8 o'clock this morning. And even just now, back at the Walmart, he was still having aftershocks. It's like, damn. So, <laughs> so when he gets like that, sometimes, sometimes he just wants attention. But sometimes it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, an urgent, Requirement, you know. So I feel bad, you know, because I'll be like, "Nope, we're not stopping." <laughs> he just wants attention, and then and then he gets out, and he's got to just <laughs> he's just got to paint the grass, you know. It's like, oh man, that sucks. I'm sorry, but <clears throat> whatever. We've all been there. Hopefully that's not what it is right now. I think he's pretty well. I think he's pretty well past it. Actually, the the, the very last one he did over at Walmart appeared to be kind of back to normal, somewhat. Hopefully he's over it. I mean, you know, if it had been me, you damn well were certain, sure I would have been stopping at all the rest areas and all the drug stops pulling off he would have just been like what the hell are you doing let's keep driving uh, funny <clears throat> if only he could speak human <laughs> since he can't speak human i have to learn how to speak dog or at least understand the dog i don't have to know how to speak it i just know how to So anyways, yeah, welcome to Rock Springs, Wyoming. Uh, we're down to, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. We're down to 2,088 miles to go. I mean, you know, whatever. That's so-so. I mean, it's not great. It's not as good as it would be if we, you know, had a faster load time and if we didn't have to stop for a uh, carrier bearing, but that's pretty good.
can't even whistle. <laughs> and welcome to Petro Laramie once again. Let's see if we can get a get our regular spot in the dirt lot here. Ah, these guys blocked off the freaking other lot. These guys parked so they blocked off the other freaking lot. You poses. Morons. Oh, maybe they did. Let's see. Oh, yeah, they sure did. Yeah, they freaking blocked it. You guys, you guys. Arr. Yeah, I guess actually I could probably fit the truck through there. If I wanted to. Maybe I just don't want to. Uh, maybe I'll just go ahead and take one of these ones right here. I can freaking see. Yeah, I think we just do that. I don't know why the parking lot's all wet. difficult to see without big giant parking lot lights everywhere. I'll tell you what. I know there's a big dirt mound we're about to bump into behind us. And we may just have bumped into it just now. Yep, I think that's calling it good right there. I think we are good in the hood. Uh, well, it's kind of a cool looking shot with the with the truck lights slid up like that. It's kind of cool looking, I think. <laughs> Max is just uh, about to have a panic attack right now. He's like, oh, really, we're stopping? Yeah, we're stopping. We're done for the night, I think. We've been up since 7.30. It's now 10 p.m. As far as our body clock goes, it's 11 p.m. here in Wyoming. And, uh, yeah, we still have two hours and 40 minutes of drive time left, but if we were to continue doing that, that would get us into wherever we wind up at 2 a.m. <clears throat> Which means we wouldn't be able to get back out on the road until noon. And that just sucks because we are, as we travel eastbound, you know, just the nature of the time zones, we lose time. So... <laughs> The further east we go, the later in the day it gets, you know, as we get, you know, through time zones, so we lose time. <clears throat> so it gets later and later, and then next thing you know, you're not starting your day until 3 p.m., you know, it's like, what the fuck? Uh, and let's see, we got, you know, we got enough miles in today, whatever. We got almost 600 miles in today, that's... That's a lot of these truck drivers. That's more than a lot of these truck drivers daily average, so that's not too bad. And we still have two and a half hours of spare drive time. So. Yeah, we're gonna call it a night. Anyways, so uh, there we go. I hope you all are doing well. I truly do. 
I hope you have sweet dreams or sweet uh, sour nightmares, whatever it is you prefer. And uh, with that, we will see you somewhere down the road here. All right, good night. See ya.